right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the St. Louis Podcast. I'm your glorious host today, Eric Brown, president of Vi Media and po- partner at Mogul Holdings here in St. Louis. Across the table from me, Adam Ferris, founder and CEO of Fly Skylink, also based here in St. Louis. Uh, this is the St. Louis Podcast each and every Friday at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. We drop an episode on all major podcasting, audio, and video platforms. YouTube, Spotify, you know it, you're listening to it, where we meet with the most badass people and creators to talk about business, entrepreneurship, and current events. Let's jump into it. Adam, how you doing? Good, good. How are you? Beside it being 100 degrees. 105, yeah. Outside. Uh, I would just, halfway through this podcast, as many of you know, uh, that have shot video or have done podcast, this lighting is insane. It's going to get hot in here. We might go to the t-shirt later. We'll see. Pretty soon. Uh, but first, you know, today what we really want to talk about was some current events, but first we'll talk about entrepreneurship. I thought it'd be a good, you know, we've had 68 episodes now, I believe. I believe this is the 68th episode. And I don't really think we've ever talked about the founding of Vi Media and really kind of where I started. So I thought it'd be interesting to kind of talk about that. So we're going to talk about entrepreneurship and a few things uh, today. So with that said, do you know, do you even know the starting of Vi? Do you know the story? I know I know bits and pieces. I know okay. bits and pieces, but not the whole story. I've actually never heard the full story from A to Z. Okay. So we, we need the we need the short story. We need the long story short today. Long story um, short, we got it. All right. Yeah, let's get it. So we were all 21 years old. I was out of college. The first thing I did, I got a health science degree. I know. It doesn't make any sense. I wanted to switch the business. They said another year and a half. And I said, screw it. I'm just going to get my degree. Went and immediately started working at a credit repair agency, cold calling. Yeah. Literally, I went in, I interviewed, I got the job, I got probably a couple hours of training, and literally, you know, that same day, two o'clock, cold call. Had no idea, had never done it. He was like, pick up the phone and call this person. And I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And that was off to the races with sales, essentially, after that. Mm-hmm. Um, there was two other guys that started the same day. Neither of them could pick up the phone mm-hmm. and dial. So they quit immediately. And one of them was my good buddy at the time, which is hilarious because I used to give him shit for that forever. But so we were doing that. We were working at AMG. We were right at 270 in Manchester in that nice office building across from where Scott Trade used to be. And, you know, we were, I was working there for a couple of years. And Garrett, myself, and a few other guys, Clayton, Natoli, and, and some other guys, we were, you know, talking about starting a business. We didn't know where to sure. start, though. We had no idea. Mm-hmm. At the time, Garrett was actually doing like some marketing stuff for loan officers and real estate agents, just personal branding, literally creating Facebook pages, posting, and bam, you're making money because, sure. you know, nine years ago, you could do that. You didn't have to spend any money on Facebook in order to do that. So we were sitting in a conference room. We called it attainment. It actually might still be on my LinkedIn profile. And it was literally like a bunch of 20 and 22 year olds sitting in this conference room Mm -hmm. uh, after hours in the office building that we use that where I worked at. So the guys that own that office space are great. And we met there three or four times over a month or two. And eventually we decided to start a marketing agency. So we started Vi. And I shouldn't even say we started Vi. We started trying to just get clients for marketing. Sure. Um, you know, and, and really we determined the best way to to start a marketing agency and why we did it is because we knew we were good at sales. We knew we were good at marketing, at least back then when it was really easy. So it was an easy foot in the door. We were like, right, you know, let's start here with the marketing company backbone. We'll be able to start other companies after that. That was the whole goal. Right. And eventually we did meet that goal, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, so we're sitting in this conference room. We were like, let's start a marketing agency. So we started, you know, signing a couple of small deals, things like that. And eventually, uh, you know, we came across a a mortgage company here in St. Louis in order to essentially make it official. Mm -hmm. They were like, listen, you know, you guys need to have an actual contract in place. You need to go file an LLC X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. So Garrett still has the photo of him sitting at Starbucks filing the LLC, which is great. I think, uh, yeah. So in a couple months from now, it'll be eight years that we started that. And a couple months after he started it, I joined on, you know, full time. It took me a little bit because I was making decent money yeah. doing credit repair. Sure. But no one wants to do that forever. Not, Deal, dealing not with dealing with those clientele um, was, you know, it was hit and miss. Yeah. Some no, of those people term. actually like got screwed over for collections or, you know, something happened, identity theft, things like that. But sure. a lot of people that you were talking to were just hoping a prayer. They didn't care about their credit. Yeah. They were just trying to get a home. We were like, 
listen, in order for you to do anything, you have to do X, Y, and Z, but a lot of these people weren't willing to even yeah. do X. They thought you were going to call and just get yeah. We're like, oh, yeah, we got you. We'll yeah. just fix it. It's like, listen, yeah. we could do some crazy stuff back then, but it's not like, you know, we're miracle workers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's that's how we started Vi. Literally, we had to file an LLC, and then there on, we just started selling social media. Right. We didn't know anything about SEO or Google Ads or anything like that back then. Sure. Had no idea. So who was the original crew? So originally it was myself, Garrett, and Clayton Natoli. Okay. Yep. And they had an office in the same office that I'm talking about. It was a little share. It was a, it, you know, it was like a co. I don't. I wouldn't even say co-working space. Professional office space. Sure. Where you could rent out individual offices. Gotcha. So they, you know, Garrett had three guys in there. Okay. And you know, a couple hundred bucks a month. Yeah. Best investment though. For sure. Hundred percent. So yeah, the little offices. That's how we started Vi. And it was so funny because back then it did, it took me a couple months to get off, you know, on credit repair. I was probably making 55 grand, yeah. you know, in tw whatever that was, 20, what is it, 2024? Shit. What, 2016? Yeah. When I was like 22 years old living downtown. Right. That was great. Yeah. I was making good money back then. I had no, I was like 55, 60 grand. I was like, shit, mm -hmm. this is awesome. And then I went to making zero, moved into my yeah. parents' basement. It was lovely. Shout out to my parents for <laughs> not hating me for that one. There you go. That's how it happens. <laughs> but yeah, I we we fought and ground for years. So then, when we started it, dude, we were 22 years old. Okay. So imagine 22 year olds, 21 year olds trying to go in. We're we're talking to business owners at least twice our age, majority majority of the time, talking about digital marketing. They're like, who the hell are these people? You're telling me. Yeah, it's a hard. That's how the whole suit game started for yeah. me. Was literally, I was like. Well, I need to do something in order to stand out and look professional. Be perspective. Like, for people to take me seriously. Yeah. I went to a men's warehouse, got one of the worst fitting suits I've ever had in my life, mm -hmm. returned it, did some research, and that's when I came across Suit Supply. Suit Supply is it. And yeah. now, of course, we got- That's where the Eric Brown started. You know, we got, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, you started with social media mm -hmm. management, mm -hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. How did that develop into doing the full digital marketing, you know, agency, doing SEO, Google ads, you know, PPC, yep. web design? How did how did that kind of transpire over time? Yeah. So web was the first thing. Because okay. like, you know, especially when you're new, building websites, especially, you know, seven years ago, it right. wasn't as complicated as it is now from an SEO perspective. So we were just, you know, we had Clayton building websites. We yeah. had we had multiple different people building websites mm -hmm. that to be frank, probably shouldn't have been building websites yeah. but we made it work regardless right yeah and run. and eventually by doing that you know we were able to hire and find good team members that were actually able to do that job i mean zach dixon for example he's our director of seo sure the way that he got that he actually got hired at vi as a salesperson really one deal shout go. out because they're still with us yeah they're still with us insane it's crazy yeah and and he was like you know uh, a couple of years in, we were like, listen, we need to broaden what we're offering Yeah. because social media is great, but we were getting to the point where you had to start paying money for ads. So we were like, you know, how do we actually generate leads? Right. Well, now what I say is literally we make sure that your business is being found for the services and products that it offers. Mm. So we got into ads. We got into SEO. Right. We partnered with an SEO agency here in St. Louis and saw how it wasn't done. And then literally Zach self-taught essentially SEO. Okay. And- you know, obviously with myself and other people, we were all able to learn SEO pretty well because we all have a, a brain knacked for, for sure. that type of stuff, sure. even though doing SEO is very technical and time consuming. And I would right. never want to do that as a full time job. Shout out, Zach. Uh, but yeah, so so we got into that. We eventually got into actually creating content as well for social media platforms, because back then, yeah. I mean, you would just be posting Shutterstock photos. Right. I mean, any it didn't even matter yeah. once you were posting back then. You were getting views right. on social media. So doing social media marketing was like the new and that was thing. That was it. Yeah. Yep. And then once we saw the down the downfall kind of a social, mm -hmm. that's when we went full steam into ads, into SEO, yeah. into web. Uh, and we didn't do social for a long time. Mm -hmm. For a couple of years, we literally didn't offer social. Right. We didn't do it just because, you know. It sounds ridiculous, but we want to make sure that our clients are successful. Sure. It's very hard in meta to track and know that the data and be able to actually prove to your client that they got a return on investment and this is the actual right. number, right? 
Sure. So, and then with tracking with Apple, it, it became a shit show. It was like, mm-hmm. this This almost isn't worth it for most businesses. And with a lot of our clients anyways, you know, they're local service companies, mm-hmm. professional services, mm-hmm. things like that. They're probably not going to generate a shitload of leads through social anyways. It's right. more of a branding. Yeah. You know, we're here. If you need us, and then you go to Google and search for that type of company, they know about you. They're like, right. oh, yeah, that's right. I've been seeing them all over the place. Yeah. So coming from doing the you know social media to start, and then mm-hmm. you guys kind of started to go in with the Google ads and things like that, where did you find that? Because you guys mostly specialize in home service companies, correct? Mm-hmm. You do yep. elsewhere. But where did you find that working with home some home service companies where did you find that that was like a good niche for you guys and then that is where you guys that's where you guys really took off and yep. that's where i kind of found out about you guys mm-hmm. what about home service companies is something that you guys have kind of gravitated towards in what you guys do with the whole even from social media marketing mm-hmm. you guys do that still mm-hmm. but even then the google ads the seo why has home service companies been something you've targeted yeah number one they spend money Okay. So they always have a marketing budget. Number two, we track and analyze everything. So, yeah. you know. Sure. Um, so we're able to, a lot of the time, if we have a client, especially that has all of their stuff set up well on the back end, mm-hmm. we can directly track all of the leads that come in from SEO, that come in from ads. And we can directly attribute all of those leads directly back to the marketing channel it came from. So we were tracking this stuff. So, like five years ago, you know, we saw how much money we were making home service companies, frankly. Right. So we know we were doing a really good job for them. So we were continuing to grow home service companies. Other companies are just, are, are almost more difficult to work with. Mm-hmm. You know, no offense to to the lawyers out there. Right. But you guys are tough. That's fair. You like to see your face and I get it. So do I. That's why yeah. I do this. That's 100% why, why we do this. <laughs> That's why we do this. But with home service companies, they spend money, they need jobs. Right. And people, and also it comes down to people are always searching for them. Okay. If you're a plumber, if you're a roofer, if you're HVAC, if you're restoration, painter, deck, pool, it doesn't matter. That mm-hmm. stuff is being searched thousands, tens of thousands, mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of time a month or a year in your given mm-hmm. city. So we know that the search volume is super high. If we're working with like a niche industry, right? you know, say something, it's like a new product that no one knows about. No one's going to be searching for that product, right? right? So then that's where you have to do brand awareness and let people know about okay. it. But we wanted to focus literally on just making sure that if someone's already searching for what you do, let's just get that lead. Right. So it's intent-based marketing. Sure. Someone already has the intent of using you or someone like you. Okay. Just make sure you get in front of them, make sure your ad or whatever, your SEO is in a good spot that they can find you. And where you're ever directing them, make sure that you can right. actually convert them into you know a potential client. Right. So with that being said, you have your, basically at, at this point, you're probably six years in mm-hmm. to the current point we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And at that point, agencies are everywhere. Yep. Digital marketing agencies, marketing agencies, pretty much at your beck and call, yep. emailing you 10 times a day. I mean, to this day, I still get five em- emails a day saying, let we me get do this. Calls. Exactly. I get calls. Exactly. Your Google business profile isn't optimized. Hundred percent. I know it's always something, something like that. I laugh when I when I answer that phone call. It, it's it's funny. I'm like, please tell me. Right. They're like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm like, not, yeah. I know. I'm not sure where that came from. Yep. So with that being said, when with Vi mm. is ROI. Yeah. Okay. Every digital marketing agency promises similar things. What was the attack that you guys took that made you guys the first ROI focused? digital marketing Mm -hmm. agency, because obviously every company in the world is focused on an ROI, but you guys chase it like nobody that I've ever seen before with, if you are doing a campaign that you guys don't think is going to work, you will stop the campaign per se and and reevaluate that where most companies would say, Hey, you know, let's finish this campaign, make sure we get our money as a company and then we'll start something new. You guys really go at that tech. So what what about focusing on ROI and how did you guys basically structure your offer, if you will, mm. focused on ROI? How did you guys basically structure that and, and come about, um, you know, just really being focused on ROI more yeah. than just putting money in your pocket? Yeah. Well, I mean, it it really comes down to the fact of when we actually started. So we were going to we were going to start a real estate company really? before we started Vi, mm. and we paid a marketing agency for some logos and things like that. And it never got done. But also from, you know, me working at my credit repair company, I saw the owner get burned by multiple companies. Sure. 
after we started the business and I started to talk to business owners, all I heard was that marketing agencies suck. And that, that's the common consensus. It sounds ridiculous, today. but I cannot sleep at night knowing I'm fucking over other small business owners. Yeah. That's crazy. So we just took it from the approach of if it's not going to work, we're not going to do it. Sure. Um, that's why now, I mean, in, in really starting four or five years ago, especially looking at, you know, we're able to do estimates and projections for ads. Right. Um, for SEO, you know, it's a little bit more difficult, but at least we can give a good idea of where we're going to be sitting, you know, six, 12 months down the road. But it just came from the standpoint of everyone's frustration was the fact that they didn't know. Yeah. And also a lot of companies still to this day, you'll pay them $5,000, right? And they're like, hey, you know, we'll put some sure. money in ads. Right. But you don't know what's going to their pocket or what's yeah. going to ads. And we heard that all the time as well. We also hear, you know, that marketing agencies, you stop paying them, you no longer own your actual marketing assets right. that you're paying for. So we were we just continued to hear all of the issues that everyone else had. Yeah. And it's like, let's just not do any of those and fix those issues. Right. And the biggest thing came down to, you know, tracking analytics being able to literally show right hey if you spend this money this is where it's going well i remember there was some point in st louis where there was a company and i'm not sure who it was i'm not really too well versed in the marketing and digital marketing mm -hmm. things but i heard it was all over the news i believe and it was a company was basically like falsifying analytics yeah okay yep and and i'm not sure i didn't i didn't watch the full story but obviously with owning a business and things like that you got to be careful of things mm -hmm. so that definitely puts like a bad name on the industry mm -hmm. but like how do you for a company like that and i don't know exactly how they did it i just heard that they were falsifying analytics and things like that yeah right how do you or how does vi as a company like as we're you know still on topic how do mm -hmm. we how do they basically show and be very transparent with their clients and make sure that they don't have to yeah wonder well that specific company i think you're talking about they have their own platform and their own platform, oh, okay. they make up analytics. It's it's an estimate. It's not real. Okay. So they're so they're like in the data. Yeah. Okay. So we actually have a couple of clients from them. One of them is a restaurant, and they were telling the restaurant the return on investment they were getting. Okay. They have no idea. Sure. They they can't tr you. The biggest issue is especially with social media, especially if you're just trying to grow a local storefront, you mm -hmm. can't track direct visits to the to the restaurant. Right. So what you have is a program where they input some data, they have their own algorithm. Sure. And it's shooting out a number, which is bullshit to the clients. Right. With us, every all the data comes directly from the programs themselves. Uh -huh. And Google Ads, Google Ads literally has their own, of course, analytics. What we do is we just pull that analytics from Google Ads. Sure. That's it. So Google Ads already gives you all the data. Okay. Cost so that's per lead. Pretty transparent. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Cost per lead, click through rate, cost per click your conversions from those keywords, all of that stuff is in Google Ads. The big reason that most companies don't want you to have access to this, and we're dealing with this with a franchise right now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he owns eight different locations essentially. Sure. So we've been testing with him and, you know, we've taken over a couple of locations at a time from his current company. And his current company still will not release any data of the ad account. He cannot go into the ad account. They won't even add him as a viewer. Okay. We'll never see the ad account that's currently being ran. And is that something that when he signed with this other company, is mm -hmm. that something that the company set up under their own name? Or is it, is this account that yeah. it has no access to it? Is that still under the company name that it, are they running ads currently? Or is it yeah. kind of a past account? So they're running ads. So they're running ads and he has no access to it. Correct. So he doesn't own the ad account. Interesting. Yeah. And, and, they're, and this know, is normal practice. There's a lot of companies that do this. So that's kind but of where the, the biggest bad thing is it's the bad or, or the bad stigma to, stigma comes around. It's a lot of the guys that have been in the game for a long time, man. Yeah. A lot of these, no offense to some of you older guys, but right. every single time that I have had an issue or a client has had an issue with I'm not gonna hand this stuff over to you. Right. It's either a massive conglomerate, mm -hmm. a huge company, you know, um, or it's a or it's a guy that and I talked to one, he's like, you don't know what you're talking about. I've been in the game for 30 years. I'm yeah. like, I get it. You're a know-it-all. Right. But you're screwing over this person. Sure. And I think it and came he, he from- They don't care. It came so from like traditional marketing. Care. Yes. You know, your 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 park signs, yep. your, your things like that. Mm. And you got to make sure that, you know, obviously those are 
back in the day, 30 years ago, say he was doing whatever he was doing. But back you had then. to do it. You had to basically yeah. have control of that. You had to be in the church, the back of the church magazine. You right. had to be in right. the magazines, the newspapers, because there wasn't anything else. Right. And, and, and as they weren't, there's a red flag. Yeah. And as a marketing company, you, you would want to control all that so you could decide, okay, say this guy gets too big, say he does this. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to kind of control what he's posting, how it's being posted out. But yep. these days with like digital marketing, you can't say like, I built this website, now I own it. I built this Google account, now I own it. I own your like basically rights to things. Well, if you pay for something, do you expect to own that? Or do you expect to- 100%. If you are paying for marketing- And I can see where they get away from it because it's like, if, if you cut my grass, do I own the lawnmower? No. Yeah. But it's a, it's a whole different like, the transparency is not there from day one. It yep. came in w when you're now- most dissatisfied. Do not know most yeah. do not know it. Yeah. When they sign, 100%. Most, of, most of these guys I talk to, business owners, well, yeah. have no idea. Yeah, it's once you're dissatisfied with the product, then they tell you, hey, by the way, if you try to leave, you're not getting anything. Correct. You're going to have to rebuild through another company. And it's the best way to keep people in. 100%, because they don't Does, want to rebuild. Think about a foundation. Think about web design. If your website's already up, like even, even for myself, like my website, and I've never had a problem with my website. My website's great and everything mm -hmm. like that. But if tomorrow something happened to my website and I was like, okay, I can't or don't want to pay this company anymore. And, you know, I, I just yeah, got to so leave this company. Your website's on WordPress. Right. You own it. Right. You can take it to exactly. one. Okay. Yeah. For for story. And that's all of our clients. Right. And that's in, in, and that's being connected with you guys. Yep. You know, my, my website is mine. Mm -hmm. But say, for, for story's sake, say I was with another company and I was like, hey, and they, and they own my website. Say it yep. was like the company we're talking about. Mm -hmm. They own my website. I... Don't want to pay them anymore. I basically mm -hmm. want to put the website on like pause while I do some other stuff, or you know, I want to just take my website because they're not perform performing for me. Yep. I can't imagine being like, okay, well now, I have to build an entire new website just because I want to leave them, because websites are not cheap, and I'm sure that they don't give you some coupon that says, hey, you know, here's Correct. a here's a here's a refund since you're you're leaving. So I say this all the time. We build websites, but I hate building websites mm -hmm. because. The last thing a business owner wants to hear is we need to build a website. For sure. And yeah, it's because it's a big expense. If you Now, I shouldn't say right. it's always a big expense. No. But if you have spent money on SEO in the past, mm -hmm. if you have a big website, if you're ranking even decently yeah. well. Well, it starts back at zero. Well, no. It does it not? No, no. If you get a new website? No, 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 no. Really? No. You'll take a hit. But the biggest, okay. you'll, the, but the biggest thing is, say you, have a, say you have a website with 100 pages. Gotcha. Now you have to have, maybe some of those pages don't bring value. Okay, you only need 50 of those pages. Okay. You still then have to launch a new website with 50 pages off the bat. Yeah. That's expensive. Yeah. It's time consuming. It's right. a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So that's why we build our stuff in Gutenberg. Like Gutenberg is future-proofed. Right. So we can, we can, so say, you know, we build a website and eight years from now or six years from now or five years from now, it's feeling a little not fresh. Right. We can go in there and freshen it up without having to rebuild the whole site. Okay. So it's kind of, you know, you can edit it along yeah. the way. Yeah. Gotcha. Because people are still using Elementor, <laughs> Divi, you know, builders in WordPress. What I would say is Gutenberg is king in WordPress. Okay. You know, people use Webflow and things like that as well. Right. Um, I'm not as familiar with it as far as SEO is concerned. That's why I just tout and is that the, Gutenberg. Is that the web builder or is that the hosting so the, the nice thing about Webflow is it's all included. Okay. But the okay. non-nice thing is if web, if Webflow goes down, so does your website. Right. Well, that's what I found is so important is- WordPress, you know, it's, it, it's open source. It's not going yeah, anywhere. Yeah. Like your website, you build in WordPress. As long as you pay your hosting- You're good. It's not going to go anywhere. Right. That's one thing that I figured out with, you know, WordPress or anything like that, or, you know, however it is, I'm not cultured as, yeah. as much as you guys yeah. are, but, you know, WordPress, where it's hosted, how it's mm -hmm. built, it matters, like, when you pull up your iPhone and you search digital marketing, okay, mm -hmm. and they click on Vi.media. Yep. Vi.media. Yeah, Vi.media. Shout out Vi.media. Shout out Vi.media. So you click Vi.media. It matters how long it takes to load, because yep. if it's, you know, I... It's called like bounce rate or something yep. like that, I believe. Yep. Okay. So bounce rates, the number of people that go to your website, or I should say the percentage of people that go to your website, don't wait for it to load or don't take any action. And right. Leave. Right. So I remember at one point I heard something about like one of the softwares you guys do has like a new uh, something, something Regina, and mm -hmm. it made it extremely fast. Yeah. Okay. That makes 
a significant difference because then I thought about it. I'm like, okay, if I go on a website on my phone and I click it and it doesn't load, I instantly just backspace and Instant. go to the next one. Instantly. It's it's like a second or two. I wait a second I, or two. I never I wait. Give a, I don't even know what it is. A couple seconds and I'm yeah. out. If it's just white if for a long If I even long. have to think that this is taking too yeah. long, I'm already out. Yeah. And, I, and, and one thing I'd say would just kind of, you know, my website, my website is really fast. Like you guys did a great job on that. I don't think that anybody that you work with has ever had a problem like that because of the way you guys build them mm -hmm. you with Gutenberg and WordPress Correct. and then the way you guys host it. Well, speed's, a huge, speed's a huge it is. thing. It if is. you're getting well, my, just... my software on there, my my like flight booking software on there is the only reason that I'm not under, I think, a second or something like yeah. that. Yeah, Correct. Because it's such a big thing. Yep. And, and it's There's still quick. There's can do with that. Exactly. Yeah. And that's up to the, you know, the people that build the software yep. to basically make a more efficient uh, and economic, you know, uh, software and plugin, if you will, widget. Mm -hmm. But it's extremely fast, and and that's kind of with everything, and that's I think why you guys have so much success is because it's it's not something you see behind the scenes, but it's also you open your phone and you click a website that you guys built, and it's extremely good. Yep. You know. Yeah. No. It's with speed. Speed's super important. Yeah. A big thing is images. You so we take a photo right now of this podcast. I put it up sure. on St. Louis Podcast homepage. Yep. Tanking. Tanking immediately. Yeah. Which now it need, has to load. Which we need to do. Now it has to load this massive image. We'll Correct. Update. We do need to update. The, St. Louis Podcast. Like, uh, we do need to update <laughs> the St. Louis there. Podcast. But, um, but yeah, so uh, so let's just, so I was, I was giving an example real quick. So yes. say you get 1,000 people a month going to your website. Yes. Some of these companies, tens or hundreds of thousands of people a month. Mm -hmm. Say your website is taking 10 seconds to load. Okay. Say your bounce rate's 50%. So yep. your bounce rate, fifty percent of the people going to your website are leaving. Gone. Bye. Yep. Now let's say your website's loading quickly, thirty mm -hmm. percent. You now for the for the person that only had a thousand visitors a month, that's two hundred more people staying on your website. Right. And I believe it's also page to page, right? Correct. Like if you click a new page and it doesn't load, people are gonna bounce out of yep. there. They can't get it to work. Yeah, so sessions. Yeah. So less sessions. Yeah. Less pages visited. Less yep. sessions, less cash, mm -hmm. whatever clear the cash. I don't remember what it is, but I remember that was a big yep. thing for a while because when we before basically I got connected with you guys, we had a website and it would take, you know, eight to nine seconds to get a page to open. And mm -hmm. instantly people were like I had people that were, you know, clients, if you will, be like, I just left the site like i yep. didn't think your site was working i just called you yep right luckily they have my number but like for a home service company they're not going to just call them they're just going to go to the next one no you have to it has to be instant right as fast as it can humanly be right because if someone's already thinking about it <clears throat> you know let's just say ads for example mm -hmm. they're like roof repair yeah okay they probably have something wrong with their roof right. roof repair bam they're going to click you know they have a leaking roof something's an issue they need someone to come out there. It's probably an emergency. Bam. They're going to click that first ad, go there, click. Hopefully, it's a landing page. Right. Click the call, and you're done. Right. Okay. But if, if shit's slow, you're not. You're going to spend way more money. Right. So even, even from an ads perspective, you spend more money. Okay. So you guys do. You guys got your ads. You guys mm -hmm. got PBC. You mm -hmm. got your SEO. You got your web design. Where has that kind of, you know, we don't want to turn this too much into, you know, a marketing podcast. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. how did that turn into something bigger than it is? Because obviously, even since I've met you guys, it's grown a significant amount. Mm. Where has the way that you do business now versus you did it seven years ago, how's that kind of transformed by into not just a digital marketing yeah. agency out of a three-man office yeah. well, to a full-fledged, you know, operation where, you know, owners are being on you know, Forbes Agency Council and, you know, Small Business Monthly and speaking at events like yourself. Mm. Like, how does it transform into something like that with there being so many other digital marketing agencies, if you will? What 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 did you guys do to make yourself stand out? Good work for Recently. clients, number one. Yeah. I mean, literally doing a good job for clients and getting referrals from them. Yeah. That's number one. Doing a good job for clients. If you could do a good job for clients, you're going to get referrals and you're going to be able to grow your business. Right. But I think it really comes down to how we differentiate ourselves from all the other marketing agencies by being able to show, you know, here's what we do. Here's estimates. You know, here's the analytics for sure. similar companies that we've worked with. And here's what we can expect. And if it doesn't work for some reason or another, try. you know, we'll either try and make it work or, you know, it doesn't. We have contracts. Yeah. But we have let... 
a handful of people out of contracts because it's not working for their business. Right. We're focused and, on ROI. And most companies will not do that. No. But I would rather do that than know that I am screwing over a company and know that I could, they're going to talk to a bunch of people. Right. I don't want them saying anything bad about us. Yeah. Then I know they could come and leave a one star on our Google business listing. So it's just, it's just not worth it. Well, I think you guys already, you know, whether you are, and, and obviously I, I know the crew at this point, but you guys are, you know, full fledged into the, the ROI, mm -hmm. you know, aspect of doing business. If you guys come now and you let a client basically do a campaign or do whatever, you know, it may be and they have bad results, and they're like, hey, we're not seeing any results for whatever reason. It, yeah. it probably may not be your fault, and yep. maybe it may be your fault. Who knows? But if you don't let them out, it means more to you being able to confidently tell new clients, we provide ROI, yep. than to continue a contract and make a buck than to let them out of their contract and figure out, and, and I think most of the time you said, they may get out of the contract. They may fix things on their end, and then they come back. Yeah. 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 You know, it's, it's because it's hard to say that digital marketing doesn't work yeah. because it does work and it has to work. And that's how you build companies, SEO, I Google think Ads. is just authentic. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And maybe we're not, but I, right. and maybe, I, and maybe I we're biased. This podcast. Yeah. What I say, you know, right. some stuff may be wrong, some stuff may be right. But for the most part, I'm talking, hey, it's me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, you know, the biggest thing with us was going back to it. We just didn't want to screw over other businesses. Yeah. We wanted to make sure that we had a service that was going to be able to grow businesses. And we also put people in opportunity to succeed. Like Zach, sure. for example. Yeah. Um, like Matt McGrail, for example. Yeah. You know, who's in charge of our ad department. You know, we were also very lucky with people we ran across, yeah. ran across and got people to join our team. Yep. Uh, you know, people ask me all the time. It's like, how were you able to hire the people you were able to hire? It's like, I don't realistically, I don't have a good answer for no, that. No, it just happened. It fell in. They, the they, best people we got hired were actually referrals from other people. Yeah. It wasn't Indeed. It wasn't any of these, you know, these things. It was literally, hey, I have a nephew. I have a cousin. I have an uncle. Yeah. I have a good friend. Yeah. Whatever. Those are the best ways to hire. Mm -hmm. And I honestly think that that is not talked about. Right. But in a lot of my networking groups, you know, I'm a part of BNI here in St. Louis, right. Masters of Referral, shout out. And one thing that we do good in that group is sometimes people don't ask for business. They're asking, hey, I need to hire an office manager with experience right. in QuickBooks. Yeah. Two weeks later, bam, Done. he's got someone from, you know, someone else that he likes and respects. Mm -hmm. So you can trust that person a hell of a lot more, which is great. Right. And... I think we have a good culture at Vi. I mean, you would know you're sure. you're you're at our office. Um, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We do, but we don't. Right. And you know, I, we just have an attitude, I guess. Of we don't have that corporate attitude. Right. Um, I know multiple people that are in large corporate jobs in sales or in marketing, and I listen to some of the calls that they have with like their management team. Mm -hmm. It's insane. No, it's bad. It's crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, this is how it is up there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we do a better job here, literally, without a doubt. Running our team, managing things like that. I'm like, these th some of these larger companies, you know, especially with marketing as well. You may be paying a lot more for some of these larger companies just because of that. For sure. That's 100%. it. There's no doubt. Bloat, overhead, everything else. Right. But you know, when we started this business, our key to success, literally, networking. Mm -hmm. For sure. How often do you hear that networking is the most important thing? To I do? don't know anybody that does networking as much as you do. No, there's a ton of people. Sure, like sure. They, there may be. There is a but, lot. But you do it. You do it a lot. And you, but you do it in a way like, and and it is you know pretty impressive sometimes. You know, we'll be doing some random thing. And it'll be like, Eric, what's going on? And you're like, I, I honestly, I don't know who that is. Yeah. I, I ran across him seven years ago. I mean, you've been you've been doing this for a minute now. Mm -hmm. So speaking of, you know, you've been doing this for a minute now. Right, we're almost at the eight-year mark. Yeah, I say we. I mean you. Yeah, and Vive. Yeah, and those guys. Mm -hmm. Right, you guys are at the eight, almost at the eight-year mark. What does the ten to fifteen-year goal look like for a company like Vive Media? To kind of wrap up the the. Do I want to share this? You you may not have to share. It. There's two two goals, and and, and don't it, even it, tell me the two the, different the, paths. Okay, two Go different paths. Number one path. Well, actually, let me start with number two path. Number two path. We, 10 years, sell Vi Media. Okay. Sell it to a larger marketing agency. We bring the talent that we have, that we need, 
mm -hmm. internally into our holding company. FYI, we we started a holding company. We started West County Insulation 2021. 2021. We'll we'll count as 2022 as the actual starting mm -hmm. year. And so, you know, we want to start to continue to grow more home right. service businesses mm -hmm. ourselves. Right. You know, con we make home service companies a lot of money. Sure. Obviously, we do well with our contracts that we have with them, but if we could do it ourselves, why not? West County Insulation, the insulation, um, you know, competition here in St. Louis was like next to nothing. We're still getting leads for forty dollars. You start an insulation company, we'll put you in the dirt. So <laughs> they'll, they'll do it. Um, but you know, so I think number two is going to be doing that. We'll sell by right. We'll sell by ten, fifteen years. I think by the time I'm 40, we'll sell by. I'm 30 now, 10 years. Yep. And we'll move those people into Mogul. We'll have hopefully five home service companies at that point, five to 10, that we can just blow up. Yeah. So hopefully we can eventually franchise some of those if we can. Right. We're trying to build processes right now for West County Insulation yeah. to eventually franchise it. The problem is we can't franchise the name West County Insulation, mm -hmm. so we'll have to figure that out down the road. But Right. But we're putting all the processes in place. And there's ways and, to do that. And we're actually going to hopefully build, Vi is going to hopefully build its own marketing platform. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, platform, it's really just going to be a portal, right, that you're going to be able to control and use. Right. Um, it's not going to be a bullshit platform mm -hmm. like the company we were talking about earlier. But the platform is just going to be able for, for you to be able to use, okay. right? Yeah. And I think that's going to be great. 100%. Well, that was kind of like the the A to Z. There we and go. There, Z Z's not. We're, you're, you guys are oh, near so Z. Oh, number one. That was number one. No, no, no. That was that was number two. So number one is continue to grind on Vi until I die. Right. Which that obviously won't happen. But yeah, I could, dude. I got some swag. I could be selling marketing when I'm like sixty. Yeah, you could. Oh my God! Imagine me when I'm six, thirty yeah, years could. from now. Fuck the yeah. suit collection I'm gonna have. I'm gonna look damn yeah, like, good. Like a little Ryan Serhan moving around. Woo. So that's the A to, that's like the A to where I like J right now. Yep. Okay, with Vi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we kind of, you know, take it to, you know, part two right there, you kind of talked about how you guys have a holding company. We'll kind of get into that with, mm -hmm. well, you know, when I start to kind of talk about yep. some things. I want to run up a little rapid fire with you. Yeah, what you got? Okay. Mm -hmm. What is the best advice you've ever received and these are business-oriented questions. Yeah. We're talking about entrepreneurship. Yeah. Give me the best entrepreneurship business owner, because you're a business owner, mm -hmm. multiple different companies now. You've, mm -hmm. you've, you've done a lot now. What is the best advice that you could give a business owner? Don't, don't overcomplicate. You're all right. You got it. Wow. Don't overcomplicate things early. Just do it. Okay. If you're starting a business, and that's literally, go back and look at podcast episodes. That is what so many entrepreneurs say. If you were thinking about doing something and you haven't done it, just do it. Because do it. <clears throat> the only thing in your way is yourself. Okay. Your family, your friends. Right. None of those people are actual obstacles. Mm -hmm. None of them are. Sure. Maybe their thoughts hurt your thoughts because they don't want you to do something for whatever reason. Right. But at the end of the day, literally just do it. Nike. Just do it. They said it right. Okay. And that's, that's a good answer. Because I talk to, and so do you. How many people do you talk to that have an idea of starting a business and they never do it? Almost every person I know has an idea. That I got this, I got this, I got this, and not one of them does it. Does it make you mad when they talk to you about ideas knowing that they're never going to do anything about it? Well, it makes me mad. Yes, that does make me – it doesn't even make me mad. It makes me just – some sometimes, and this sounds bad, right? Mm. But it sometimes makes me question whether I want to be friends with those people yeah. because obviously you are who you surround yourself with. Yep. But if a guy comes to you with a great idea and we're all sitting there saying that's a great idea, yeah. and then he goes to his bartender job the next day yeah. and does nothing about it mm -hmm. and then comes to me three months later and says, dude, I I mean, I got this. We should we should do this. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Absolutely not. Because you said you had an incredible thing and I said do it and then you didn't do it and now you got something again. Mm -hmm. It's about doing it. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. A hundred percent. So then what's the worst advice you could give what's the worst advice you've ever received as an entrepreneur uh, uh, my the worst advice i've ever received was don't start what you're doing go work for someone else okay and i i heard that all the time from family from friends they were like why are you going to start your own business 
They're like, Eric, you're smart. You can go work, you know, you go work in a company. Mm -hmm. But there was just something, there was something there. I don't know. Something in the back of my brain. I was like, I don't want to though. Yeah. No, there's something about staking your own claim. That sounds ridiculous. No, it doesn't though. But it's like how, I don't know. I wasn't as fulfilled as I am now. Yeah. When I, in my previous jobs, Mm -hmm. a thousand percent. Right. Even if I could probably honestly make more money going and just doing some bullshit sales, right. some job somewhere. Right. What is that going to do? Mm-hmm. It's also not the long term play because it's not. Correct. I've heard, and I can get into we it when we talked about the when we play. exactly yeah. exactly. I want to be able to sell sell Vi eventually. Right. And we'll eventually be able to. Right. And and I can get into that. You know, before I, I talked for a fifteen minute you know tangent about what we were about to you mm-hmm. know say there with the long term play. And we'll talk about that in a minute. What's your other rapid fire? My other rapid fire is what is one skill that every entrepreneur slash business owner should master? Networking. Okay. Absolutely. It's a good one. And you don't have to. So, you know, I, we were actually kind of hinting at this earlier. And you were talking about kind of how I network. <laughs> I network differently than a lot of people do. Without a doubt. Because what I'll do is I'll go to a networking event. I won't shake a thousand hands. No. But what I'll do is I'll have four good conversations. Right. I'll have a conversation for 20 to 30 minutes with someone. Here's the thing is I'm I am completely and, and, and I've got if you but want well, with what you do, you have to network entirely different than what I do. Exactly. Like exactly. you you have to go to I don't even know, Chase Park Plaza. Well, here's the thing is like I've been told bar. so many times, like, oh, you need to humble yourself. Like go to this networking event, this networking event. I'm like, okay, I could do that. Yes, you got to go yes. with fish. Exactly. If you're if you're throwing a right. fishing line out, right. there's no fish. Hundred I mean, percent waste of time. And and so say I would go to a networking event full of home service companies, yeah. such as you do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Does it make sense to go there? I may meet some people. Yeah. Okay. And they may know someone. And they may know someone that knows someone that knows someone that yeah. knows someone that knows someone that flies that also knows someone that may get yeah. stuck in some state and needs to get home one time. Correct. Right. Or I could find the one person that is at the network that at that networking event that flies every single day of his entire life. You don't know, but it's a probability game. Mm-hmm. What is the probability that I go there and I do anything, or I spend like like I spend three to five hours, three you know, or one to three hours, depending on what kind of networking event you're at, whether you're at an expo or whatever. Mm-hmm. What are the odds that I go to one of those events and I meet somebody that genuinely created value from what I was doing? Also, on the other side, mm-hmm. what does a private jet charter company bring to a r- insulation or a um a textile company nothing 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 at all correct but if with that same logic Unless you i can't franchise. i can't say nothing i can't say nothing i could theoretically say yes i know someone that knows franchise someone that owners knows would someone be good of right. a home service company right and i know someone or that knows like, someone that knows someone or like the guy or person that sells franchises yeah you know they're traveling. They're like the business development coordinator for right. for Ace or whatever have you. Yeah. Then, but but no, I mean you're no. There's no you going to some of the networking events I go to would make no sense. Not at all. Because you would be talking to attorneys, mm-hmm. you know, that are selling to small businesses. You'd be talking to small businesses. You'd be talking to contractors. You'd be talking to whatever accountants. You'd be talking to whoever loan officers, real estate <clears throat> agents. No, I yeah. you, I would not hang out where I would hang out. Right, hundred percent. Where I would hang out, country club. Yeah, sit there without a doubt. Sit at a country club. Go to the Chase Park. You already know it. Go to Cafe Napoli for sure. So let, let's let's flip the book here. Okay. Yeah. So you kind of hinted you kind of hinted hinted to it mm. a couple minutes ago, talking about your basically option to provide media. Yeah. You guys have the holding company. Yeah. Do you guys disclose the holding company name yeah. and everything? Yeah. Okay. So Mogul Holdings, mm-hmm. basically, I was brought in through Eric and Garrett mm. at one point, and we had an idea. We had an idea to sell a service, and that service is private jet charter. Yeah. Okay? So you're flying A to B. Mm. We don't own a big fleet of jets or anything like that, but you basically facilitate the flight similar to an Airbnb or anything like that. So Mogul Holdings basically came through. If we want to run it back and kind of describe the Vi Media aspect of that, the reason that I partnered with you guys 
was because I saw the results and the ROI that you were getting for other companies. Mm -hmm. The web design's immaculate. Yep. The SEO works. The ads work. The the PPC we we haven't explored yet, but it's all those other things, and then obviously the administration. So that the ten year yep. play is what I'm interested in, and mm -hmm. what I you know basically fell for. So with what I do, let's kind of run back. Yep. The, you know, obviously my company is not almost eight years old. Correct. Like yours is. Correct. But in 2023, we partnered mm -hmm. through Mogul Holdings, which obviously you are an owner of. And from then on, and, and I get asked all the time, why did you start a private jet charter company? Obviously, that's a cool thing why to do. Why did you? Okay. So, so why did I? Yes, I think jets are cool. Mm -hmm. Yes, I want to fly for cheaper. But no, it's hard to fake flying a private jet if you're not actually wealthy yeah. or at least have enough money to afford the service itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what you're doing, owning the company and running the company, is you're creating a huge network of high net worth individuals that then, in turn, are not just friends, at some point could be family, but are then clients of future endeavors, mm -hmm. whether it's you know, something I do in the future, I have a network now of people that can't fake it. Yep. Because I see a lot these days, you know, you go to certain networking events, this guy may have, you know, done a million dollars worth of exactly like what Jason talked about last time he was on the podcast. Yeah. He talked, yep. he, he, this guy tells him, no, you shouldn't buy this Porsche because my buddy has this Porsche. And then you go and ask that guy for money, and he has yeah, no money. money. Yeah. There's a lot of people that fake it. Mm -hmm. You can't fake flying a private jet unless Correct. somebody else pays for it. Correct. Or the company comps it. Right. The company's not competent. No. Comp in the flight for just anybody. So if the company comps it, you're somebody. If mm -hmm. you can afford it, you're somebody. And even if you're not somebody, say, famous or anything, you have my respect because you can afford it because you did something that made you able to afford it. Yep. So you're you're really just creating a, a network of extremely respectable, most of the time at least, mm -hmm. respectable, high net worth individuals that honestly- Unless they, you're taking a jet to Epstein, you know? Sure, yeah, that's kind of sketchy. I can get there. <laughs> but a lot of the time, dude, honestly, the aviation industry is dated. Yep. There's a lot of you know older people in it. Dude, the software right? is dated. So every, everything is everything's dated. Everything's dated. You know, websites, it's obviously. Insane. Obviously you have your net jets and they have a massive budget and, and you know, your fly, um, you know, there, fly exclusive Visa Jet. Even that great? It's not bad, but you know, as a marketing guy, you could probably you know nitpick a couple things. But those are three companies out of thousands. The basis of charter companies, you have two different people. I don't you have the so. exactly. So you have you have two people or two kind of demographics. You have the old guys that have been doing private jet charter since jets have been a thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you have the younger guys like myself. But to to my knowledge, I'm one of the younger guys doing it. And I think that that does have a lot of pull because I go meet with these older guys. And, and I don't think that it's like it was in the old days where, and I don't say old days as, as 30, 40 years ago. I'm saying even 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. A 22-year-old yeah. was insane doing some of the stuff that, you know, we're working on, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Nowadays, an 18-year-old makes $100 million doing OnlyFans and, yeah. and TikTok and all this Whatever, random stuff. Anything. Yeah. Anything. Crazy. YouTube, yeah. But you still get the respect sometimes and it is harder like like you said you know wearing the suits yep you know kind of going to certain events talking bigger um they definitely respect that coming from you know kind of a not elderly but an older demographic in the aviation industry mm -hmm. because most people that i meet are older by a good amount yeah like if not double well, there's my not a lot age. of 30 year olds flying private no no or there's 20, not definitely not 20 -year -olds. there's not and that's one thing that we've kind of tried to, to steer towards is obviously there, there's starting to be more 20 to mm -hmm. 35 year olds that are flying private because they're making that OnlyFans money, that TikTok money, the Instagram money, the influencer money. You shouldn't be Whatever here. it may be, whatever it may be, the younger people are starting to fly. And who do they want to play with? They want to play games with the guy that's like me, that's younger, first the guy who's, you know, maybe old and outdated and yeah. doesn't understand what his things are because that's just how the industry is. But at the same time, What's up with the what's up with some of the the older guys wanting to mentor the younger guys? In aviation? Just in general. I I personally think that you should everybody should have a mentor and I don't have the answer for you on how I would to definitely get mentor when I'm older. A mentor? I yeah. don't have the answer on how to get a mentor. 
I haven't figured it out myself all that well. I obviously have mentors. Not, nobody that's, you know, over. I don't have, I don't have a mentor. No, no. I have yeah, multiple no, people I. that I respect and I look up to and I listen and value their opinion. Yeah. But I don't have anybody that. I don't have anyone I can call. I don't have anybody that I can call. And I, and funny enough, I've even, there. there's. Hey, shout out. Shout You're out. listening now. You want yeah. to be my mentor. Yeah. No, funny enough. I've got great ideas. Just talk to, I need someone yeah. to talk to. If yeah. you like whiskey or beer, I'm also your guy. Yeah. There's a. Uh, there's this um there's this guy and I even reached out to him and this he needs to be he, this needs to be labeled as Eric needs a mentor. Eric needs that's a mentor. The, Bad. A, a and Adam needs a mentor. Yeah. You know, I don't need anybody. But at the same time, like there's there's two waves these Mogul days. You have a mentor. Dude, here's the thing. Everybody and their mom is a coach or a mentor or whatever these days. And you can pay for well, a mentor. Don't say they're mentors because mentors usually don't get paid. Right, exactly. That's, what, always that, that's what I was about to say. Mentors don't get paid. Mentors do Correct. it because they're genuinely rich and they want to help the younger generation Correct. or, you know, whatever the reason may be. Yep. So, like, I've I've actually DM'd somebody that I, 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 well, I listened to their podcast and I looked up to, and he even was like, if you want to have a mentor, just DM them. Mm -hmm. I DM'd him. It didn't work out. He didn't even respond. He just looked at it and didn't respond. I'm like, okay, that... Is good. And is I, he here locally? No, no, no. He's he's out of town. But I think it is good. Some, shout out. No, we don't need I'm to give just, a shout I'm out. Just we don't need to give him a shout out. <laughs> but the funny thing is that a lot of times, um, these days especially, it's very easy to find out uh, basically who's your friend and who's not your friend. Mm -hmm. And it's actually good when somebody does something like that mm -hmm. because you know. Yep. Now I can now I can stay away from that person. Yep. That person's not good for me. I'll keep them over here mm -hmm. and I'll mess with the people that are over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. The people that respond to me care about me. Because you don't want to mentor that. I heard a story about it the other day about a guy that, you know, had a mentor, um, stole some money and blamed it all on the kid. You don't want that situation. No. Because that that is too easy for it to happen. Yep. Who was the problem? The mentor. Yep. Who didn't steal the money? Not the kid. The kid yeah. didn't steal the money. Yeah. Right. But the easiest person to pin it on yep. is, the, is kid. the kid. Yeah. Right. So that happens a lot more, apparently, you know, and, and I'm not very, I've never had that problem, but apparently that happens a lot more. So like finding a mentor, obviously in the aviation industry too, it's hard because everybody these days theoretically is a threat to each other yeah. because of the way that the industry is going. Mm -hmm. I mean, but think about it. Like, like for Boeing, they just had that whole trial. Yep. Their CEO makes $36 million a year. He admitted that they might do some stuff against whistleblowers. Did you see? Yes. He goes, yeah, we might we might backlash yeah. against whistleblowers. Like, yeah. Yeah. $36 million. Okay. Backlash or kill? Which uh -huh. one? But it's things like that. Like, finding a mentor is not feasible always. Right? I don't... Maybe I just haven't tried. Yeah. To be honest, I haven't tried. But also, so I feel like you don't want to mentor me. Come on, come on now. I know, oh. right? I know me. Come on, I know. What are we doing here? Right. Episode sixty nine next week for the pod. We're do are they, dude, host we're of the St. Louis podcast. Host episode sixty nine. We got a marketing agency. We got a holding company. I know. What more do I have to do for a mentor here in St. Louis, dude? You're telling me. I get hit up me. by coaches all the time. I do <laughs> a lot. Yeah, send me thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. I'll coach you. Join my mastermind. Yeah. To be in a room with a bunch of other morons that don't know what they're doing that pay yeah. for this coach. Um, Talk to me. Talk to me. What do we got? What do we got news-wise? We talked. All right. Matt, how much time we got? A couple more minutes? All right. Time. You know you know one thing I really want to talk about? What do we okay. got? And this is going to get spicy. This is this is kind of the same topic as we are talking about. Obviously, with what I do, this is, this is a passionate topic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two... Climate activist this morning, yesterday. June twentieth. Was it yesterday? Yeah. Okay. I actually didn't want to talk about this. We'll talk about it though. June nineteenth, twenty twenty four. Yeah. They took a grinder, grinded open a gate. Are you talking about Stonehenge? Fence. No, 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 no. Oh, we well, are talking about something else. Well, here we go. Let me You talking me... about oil activists right now? I am. Climate activist. Okay. okay. Maybe oil, whatever you want to consider it. Let okay. the story play out. Okay. Okay. Let the go, story play go out. Go for it. Go for it. Two two ladies, mm -hmm. okay, they took a grinder, they broke through a fence, mm -hmm. okay? They got into the fence with these powder paint fire extinguisher looking things. Yes, and the they, orange stuff, right? And they painted Taylor Swift's jet. It's two jets, okay? I looked up the tail numbers with the softwares and things that I have. 
One of them, I couldn't see the tail number. Obviously, can't look it up. Mm. One of them certainly was not them because she owns a Gulfstream. Yep. She owns one jet right now. The yep. other one was sold to a local St. Louis company. Shout out. Shout out. So the funny thing is, is neither one of those jets were there. The second one was owned, and I it's disclosed the name, but it's owned by a basically like natural – um, the person who owned the jet was very for climate yeah. change. Yeah, very for climate change. Yeah, but as a but as a jet. as a billionaire. Yeah, because the thing is, jets are not the biggest problem. Jets are not the problem with climate change. They're not what cause things. The they the, don't help. The they nothing helps, dude. These lights, nothing helps. Yeah, you know, it's, true. it's like Fugazi, Fugazi. That's true. You know, nothing helps. It's it's Con- all the different container ships are crazy. Look that up. It's all something. The it's all something. Yeah, anyway. But the person who owned that mm-hmm. was for climate change and mm-hmm. things like that, mm-hmm. right? And they had a jet to get from certain rallies to other things. And they're just rich. A billionaire should not go on a commercial flight. It's first of all a safety risk. Second of all, you made a billion dollars. You should. Be able to have the luxury of flying however you want, whether you like climate change. Yeah, you're or not. a billionaire. You ain't, you ain't you ain't sitting at the gate. You're not sitting at Southwest Airlines waiting for no. you know Group Two to come into. So I saw this as well. Okay, so let me tell you, I I looked into Just Stop Oil. Yeah. For five minutes last night. Yeah. Highly funded by Rockefeller, Rothschild, and those people. Well, yeah. So what? And I'm not, I hate to be a conspiracy guy because everyone's just like, oh, you're a conspiracy guy. It's like, no. One of, the, one of these days, literally, Eric, look Eric, into who, look Eric into Eric who. Brown does not want to off himself. If yeah, he disappears, no, I will never kill myself. If he disappears, you know why. I will never kill myself. Uh, I may disappear. So, so Stonehenge, they covered it, just stop oil. Now, uh, that what they're saying, the thought, the thought process is these companies or these foundations are actually set up to make them look stupid. Yeah. So no, they kidding. want Just Stop Oil to look stupid. Right. Same with these climate change people. They're not, they're probably not actually climate change people. Right. Well, have you seen, did you see the video of this happening? One of them got tackled, not tackled, but pushed back. Their paint. You're throwing work. stuff on Stonehenge. I'm knocking you out. That's crazy. And, and here's the thing is, is, or at least I'm trying to. What does that, like, okay. What does this have to do with just stop oil? If we want to, no if idea. we want to be, because it's got news. Here is exactly it got this news. This is why just stop oil is fake. It, like this is so obviously fake. It what got are they news. Attacking Stonehenge. It got for? news. But here, let let's cover something. Let's get political. I put on my Instagram this morning that we're not going to get political. Yes. But if you have um, Stonehenge, whatever the name of it's called, yeah, you have the Mona Lisa painting. You have certain things like that that are getting vandalized. It's all fake. Your I d- I your your normal. Mm-hmm. Stereotypical conservative Trump loving American flag Confederate is going to get pissed. No, no, no. They don't go and appreciate those things. Your your hick guy that you don't like that's wearing the American flag bandana yeah, yeah, is yeah. not going to Stonehenge. No, He's not going to see the Mona Lisa. No. They're attacking the wrong things. If you want to be, it's I'm insane. telling you why. I just told you. Why. I know, but it's because it got news. It's it, well, but you it's could, because it's got news and right. it's fake. They yes. want them to look stupid. Right. No one wants the Mona Lisa to get destroyed. No, no, of course not. But the f- also, you should look into. By the way, look into. Um, this is crazy. Maybe we'll have to talk about this in a future episode. But I was looking into some of the famous artists over the last like 150 years, all tied to families, money. Because if you look at some of these paintings going for like a hundred million dollars, it's like, dude, I could do that in five minutes. Mm-hmm. It's like that's obviously money laundering or something going on here yeah oh dude for sure well these just, just stop oil and all these just stop oil fine you know i'm cool with uh you know figuring out a renewable energy but these people are literally i think put in place to make the climate activists look dumb because they do when they do shit like this mm-hmm. they're like what the hell are you doing on stonehenge it has nothing to do with oil yeah but the only reason they did it some marketing, some genius marketing person was like, listen, let's make these guys look like assholes again. Yeah. Let's go fuck up Stonehenge. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah. do you think we could have, you, we got we got the money to back these guys to get out of jail? It's like, we have unlimited pockets. Yeah, it's like, and the funny thing, it just doesn't really make sense. Obviously- It doesn't make sense. Well, have, what I'm saying. I don't know if you've ever seen, but like, you, you can why tell- wouldn't you, Why wouldn't you get a ship and go out to the ocean and just start destroying- Yeah. Start yeah. and start destroying. Um, uh, what do you call it? 
where they pump oil out the, the oil whatever the hell lines yeah yeah oil, oil rigs there yeah. we go out in the ocean it's like go destroy that yeah go to pp's headquarters yeah. go to like what do you they don't they don't really think that much no what you're saying right now is what they want you to think though <clears throat> Yeah, they want you to think they don't think that much. These aren't climate change activists going here, right? Just stop oil is bullshit, and well, I think this t entirely proved it. It's so obvious, right in your face. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. It's insane. It's all goofy stuff. Also, last thing before we wrap up, uh, did you see two astronauts are stuck on the space station right now? You said that earlier, and I didn't know that. Uh, which is funny because all the news today is of the climate activist things, yet we have two astronauts stuck in space that aren't being saved because of why. You so, read it. So there were, on the way up, there were a couple of pieces that had issues and their thrusters were randomly not working hmm. and working. So they still don't know exactly what the issue is. They're just chilling up there. They're just floating They're just, in orbit? So they were only supposed to go up for 10 days. They're going <clears> to <throat> easily be over 20 days by the time they come back down. It's not good. And... Boeing just keeps fucking up. Yeah. Boeing. And you know what's so funny? I read somewhere it's like the Boeing CEO or someone said that, you know, the uh the passenger side isn't affiliated with the space side. It's like maybe they should be because yeah. you guys are fucking up on both ends, right? Yeah, now. you guys aren't doing it. But also good. space travel, I mean it's sketchy. I mean, way. come on, it's space yeah. travel. But also yeah. it's like I haven't heard of Tesla or Tesla. I haven't heard of SpaceX having any issues with people getting stuck mm -hmm. on the space station. No. So, I don't know. I don't know either. I think Boeing needs to hire potentially a local marketing company that can maybe yeah. help with their PR. Yeah, because it's, it's not um, working right now. I do have one recommendation. <clears throat> Vi.media. We can help you out. We'll go through the government uh, contract. Yeah. Whatever thing that we have to get approved for mm -hmm. to get the government. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll make you guys look better. Good. That's it. That's all we got. What other questions? Do you have anything? That's all we got for today. Nothing at all? I think we're out. Good. All right. Actually, let me ask you. You asked me, what is, what's the best advice you've ever received and what's the worst? You can start with whatever. Mm, I think the, and this is a recent, mm. this is a recent, and I don't have a mentor, but a guy that I look up to said this and i know it is from a podcast recently mm -hmm. i can't remember the guy's name but he's like a bald ish guy but it's the magic that you are looking for is in the work that you're avoiding yeah but i think that's the best advice because i get i get lazy sometimes and i think that that is very quickly and easily if you really think about it and you say it over and over the magic that you are looking for is in the work that you're avoiding mm -hmm. well it's you know what i mean business owners all the time do the <clears throat> easy things yeah you check off, right. or they're doing things off. that they think is right, right, and they're not. Yeah, you're doing things that aren't really pushing the business forward. Right. There are times I've done this so many times. It's like I there's that one thing mm -hmm. that I need to get done, more important than anything else. Mm -hmm. But it's like I'm gonna go over here and you know edit this document that yeah. I needed edited a couple months ago. It's like that doesn't need to be yeah. done right now. But I you get a dopamine rush. Oh, for you, sure. You know you you check yeah. it off the list. But really, I need to do this. Yeah. I, yeah, I I talked a couple weeks ago in networking, literally about do the hard thing. Yeah, do the I was like, thing. write out a list of everything you're procrastinating on. Do the hard thing. Hundred mm. percent. What about the worst? I think the worst advice, or maybe it wasn't ever advised. It was people, same kind of you know concept as you had. Mm. The worst thing that anybody has ever tried to get me to realize, or tried to get me to believe, or said to me was to be realistic. Yeah. You're 20, what does that even mean? You're 21. Don't do a private jet charter company. It's not going to work. Don't do this. Don't go back yeah. to college. Yeah. Be realistic, dude. Like, you're not going to do this. Yeah. Be realistic. That's not going to work. Yeah. Be realistic. Like, okay. And this is this is what I was saying 20 minutes ago. Be realistic is the dumbest thing that I've ever heard. Because what? If you're realistic, you're going to what? You're going to go to high school. Mm. You're going to get a good GPA. You're going to go to college. You're going to party. You're going to do whatever you're going to do. Yep. You're going to graduate college. Yeah. You're going to maybe maybe make 50 grand in your first year or 60 grand if you're really freaking lucky and you're really smart maybe you'll make something under 100 near 100 mm -hmm. okay you'll do that you'll do roughly between that 50 and 90 maybe 100 
for the next five years, you'll get a raise to whatever you're at. Say you're at 75, you'll get a raise money to 80. Doesn't sound bad, Adam. You'll get a raise to 80. Then you then you get to 35, you get a raise to 40. Mm-hmm. Or uh, sorry, you get a raise to 95. Right. Then you're 40, you get a raise to 100. Sure. Now you have your own office. Mm-hmm. Okay. You have a little bit of respect, but every day you go into work at nine, every day you leave at five. Mm-hmm. Nobody really cares about you in that company. Yeah. Unless you're in a really good company. Next year goes by, or five, 10 years go by, you're 55, 65, whatever you are at that time. Mm-hmm. You now have the corner office and you're making $500,000 a year. You've yeah. made it. Yeah. You're done. Now you retire with your 401k. What did you really accomplish in life? You did the same thing as. 500,000 other people mm-hmm. that had the exact same job you did. You can't say that you could leave that job at any point. If you if you got pissed off one day, you got to go into work pissed off. Yep. And you have to say yes sir, no sir to your boss. Exactly. Otherwise, you're losing that raise. You're never going to get that raise. You're never going to get that corner office. You're never you can't speak your mind most of the time. No. If you have an opinion about something and it goes against what the company you work for says, that opinion sticks, you leave. Yep. It's never the other way. Your yep. opinion is not the one that matters when you're not owning the Just company. Like HR isn't for the employee. Exactly. So you do that for 40 years after college. You mm-hmm. you retire when you're 65, whatever the case is. You have your grandkids. You have the ideal nuclear family, mm-hmm. right? You know, the American dream. Dude, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. Yeah. That sounds terrible. I agree. You you have the most bland life. You, you have the same life as all the other people that are in your box house lit neighborhood. Back in the day. And it's not about money. Well, back it's about day, what you've accomplished. Back in the day, it, that doesn't sound too bad. Because you didn't yeah. know. Right. Back in the day, like before the internet, think about the opportunity cost. It wasn't like right. you didn't know. Well, it's not even about you, the money. It's about what you've accomplished. You don't you even like, yeah, oh, I got my trophy because I was a number one sales director yeah, yeah. at this company two years running. Yeah. Yeah, but the guy who owns it is playing golf on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. He went to Vegas the yeah. other day. Yeah. Then he went to the, his chateau. Mm-hmm. You're working for somebody else for your entire life. Yeah, you may make okay well, money. You can't be business owners. And I don't expect everybody to because it makes it good because it makes it easier for me then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Good. Well, uh, yeah. Good. But that's the be realistic. It's people that – it's never the person that owns the business that makes $100 million a year that says, be realistic. Don't do that. It's the guy that makes 60 that can't hardly pay for a gallon of gas mm-hmm. say, be realistic, dude. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, you haven't made money in a year. Okay, well, I have 64 more years yeah. to deal with. Yeah. That I didn't make a dollar this year. Yep. Okay. Yep. Business is supposed to be hard. Mm-hmm. It's usually when you like, like you can't genuinely I said be business happy. Business is the hardest sport. Like last year, and yeah. everyone hated me. It's it it is though. But Everyone's you can't. Like you ever taken a fastball from Nolan Ryan? I'm like, yeah. No. Shut up. Shut up. But you're, you, baseball. Listen, sports players have the best job on earth because they get to go run around and play a sport that they love, yeah. probably since they were a kid, and get paid for it. Sports is easily one of the best. It jobs. is not. I, I don't even. I classify it as a job, sort of, but it's not a job. It's really a hobby. Well, you have to work out a lot. You have to eat well. So you have to do so the same. That, so here, you have to do the, the same. Is off the court. You have to do the same thing that you do that a normal like CrossFit mom does on a Tuesday, and she's got to get her kids up and then go do yeah. work at a mortgage firm. That's fair. It's the same thing. That's yet fair. they get paid millions of dollars, and I'm not discrediting them. But for people to like, like one thing that I've I've got a lot of shit on, and I tell my dad this all the time, like you know he'll be fucking jumping and joining for the the Chiefs or something like that. I'm like you're watching, or you know he's wearing a jersey. You're wearing another man's name on your back. That guy's not paying your bills. That guy's not. Mm-hmm. That guy doesn't know who the fuck you are. Yeah. No, he doesn't know. Or they care. He does. He doesn't know who you are. He doesn't care about you. Yep. And you you care more about that guy. Also, being a Chiefs fan at St. Louis is like whatever the case may mad. be. Whatever the case may be, if you're not a family member of a player or you're not dating somebody or whatever the case may be of, you know, you're really close to that person, wear a no-name jersey. The jersey, name on the front, whatever. But if you're like... Get your own name on the back. If you're gawking over a guy that's the same age as you and you're like, you know, I can't even think of some player. I don't want to, you know, bring the blues up because one day I may, may, you know, meet the guy that I, you know, talk shit on. Yeah. But honestly, fuck it. Like, say I have a a Tarasenko jersey on. Yeah. That guy doesn't know who the... Oh, guy, no, doesn't he doesn't care, care who I am. No. Nothing I ever do is gonna matter. No. Yet I made that guy money by buying that jersey, yep. and I'm supporting him, and I'm probably blowing other people off. You know, like like you're gonna have an argument with your friend for two hours, be like, Tarasenko's better than this guy, and better than this guy. It's like, why are you having that argument? 
So I'm the wrong person to ask because, to be honest, I don't pay a lot. I don't either. Sports. I hate sports. I don't watch sports. I think it's a waste of time. I I watch F1. The off F1. I I like keep F1 up set. sort of with local sports. Not at all. But when I see keep up, I don't even I know like, seasons at this point. I don't even know the starting lineup for the Cardinals to be honest. So I should. I couldn't name a single person on the field. Is, is Adam Wainwright still playing? No. But no. It I took don't. me a second. He's announcing now. Then yeah, no, I don't know. I uh, is Lights is Lynn. Is uh, what's the what's the catcher's name that starts with like an M? Marvel? No, that's, nah, that's not it. I don't know. I don't. Yadier know. Molina. We're gonna get. So Does he still shit. play? No, dude. He hasn't played a couple. Because years. there's a thing. We're the St. Louis podcast, but hey, we didn't say this is St. Louis Sports Talk Radio. This is not. Okay? This is not the St. Louis Sports Talk Radio. That's right. This is this is not the hockey podcast. This is also Louis filmed business talk radio. This is the business we talk. We meet with the most badass people and creators to talk about business, entrepreneurship, and current. I'm just kidding. Let's wrap it up, dude. Yeah, be realistic and let's wrap this up. We should probably wrap it up. Be realistic, dude. All right. Before we get out of here, if you like this episode, please like, review, subscribe. Show us some love. Share it to someone who you think would find this entertaining, interesting. We had some good conversation today, so I'm pretty yeah. happy about the podcast. Yeah, um, Comes out every single Friday, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. So hit that notification bell if you want that notification. And, of course, uh, you know, Vi Media. If you need a digital marketing company here in the St. Louis or if you're listening abroad, mm -hmm. we work in all 50 states. If you need a free performance review, if you are spending money on marketing right now and you want to know how well you're doing, if there's room for improvement – or if you're doing a good job, we will let you know. Please, uh, you know, you can reach out to myself, Eric Kemp Brown, across all platforms. Go to Vi.media. Uh, of course, sponsored by Fly Skylink. Go Fly to FlySkylink.com. Talk to Adam here. Get your flight booked. It's not only here in St. Louis. We can take care of you all around the United States and abroad as well. Yeah. Um, and, of course, last one, Half Coast Studios. Shout out to Matt and team. If you guys need a podcast recorded here in St. Louis or just need help with the distribution uh, of them just literally putting it out for you guys or just editing that content, they can take care of you. Halfcoaststudios.com. Yeah. All right. That's all we got. We'll check see everyone next week. Yeah. And check us out on the St. Louis podcast. That's Instagram, right. Twitter, that's, that's everything. Right. Eric Kemp Brown. That's right. Adam G. Ferris. Adam G. Ferris. Have a good one. Peace. See ya.